Welcome back to the channel. Today we are, I want to say playing, but, oh my lord. Um, I, oh, that's, what the hell. Okay, we are doing War Remains. Dan Carlin presents an immersive memory. I mean, how immersive is this going to, oh, okay. Let's just click. I mean, it's saying pull trigger on a Vive ones, but uh, what the hell, right? Yeah. Someday we're going to be oh. able to preserve memories, save them in a way where they can be incorporated into the history books, and you can download them, and then walk a mile in the moccasins of the people of the past. But there are good memories. And then there are bad memories. And there's something I... fascinating, isn't there, about the most extreme memories of human history? If you could actually download a flashback of, say, the Western Front of the First World War, it might be the most intense thing you could ever experience. Oh, my lord! You would be present, then, for a war that was meant to end all wars, supposedly. What? You would instead be watching modern warfare begin. I don't want to watch modern warfare begin. That conflict marked the murderous dawn of an era, where a mechanized, industrialized, and efficient 20th century dragged the old, honorable, glorious, romantic 19th okay, no century hands. across the muddy fields of Flanders and shot it in a trench. Why am I hearing lots of. Oh my lord! <laughs> Nice! Oh! Jesus! <laughs> when you're ready, if you're ready, for even a simulation of what actual people went through, follow in the footsteps of the soldier in front of you as okay. he steps straight into the fire of the first oh. world. <laughs> Look at that! Oh! Oh, right. Do you, do you actually want me to step into it, or...? No. No, you want me to get dragged into it. Okay. <laughs> I really try not to swear it's a The world oh! was thoroughly 19th century. At the beginning of this war, you have French oh! soldiers marching off to battle with a sense of romance, expecting honor and glory. Oh! And when these 19th century troops, wearing red pants and blue jackets with tails, encounter 20th century machine guns and giant, giant artillery pieces, oh. the French are torn to shreds. Okay, I'm with you. Nobody had expected anything quite like this. How could they? Automobiles, for example, are new in the First World War. Submarines that can travel under the surface of the sea and attack shipping? That's right out of a Jules Verne book. Okay. Oh. And how about the H.G. Wells-like science fiction air machines that are filling the sky in numbers for really the first time ever? Oh, what's that? This kind of mechanization and the Ooh, growth of industry and real assembly big. lines and factories will become the hallmarks of war in the 20th century. This is not but good at keeping really your focus. Time you get to see them. The power of all this new weaponry and all the steel in the air make it suicidal for people to stay above ground. And that's how you get the growth of these trenches, stretching all the way, eventually, from the mountains to the sea across the entire western front. The terrain becomes hideous and gruesome, and the artillery barrages turn the landscape into a totally alien-looking environment, like the moon, only weirder. Some okay. of the battles from this war are legendary. Meat Legendary. Like Verdun, or the Somme, a months long battle where the British attackers on the very first day oh. suffer 58,000 casualties. Where's that balloon guy? But 3rd Ypres, often called Passchendaele, took that horrific, Mordor like, hellish landscape and flooded it with double the normal rainfall. Um. Just when you thought a combat environment couldn't get any more nightmarish. Oh. Impossibly, yeah. Passchendaele does. What the flip? 
What the hell am I getting dropped into? <laughs> oh my god, that works. What? I'm ready! You ready? Let's do this for Prince Elder! Stick together! Now look at that! Let me! Go! Go! Oh! 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 Bad. Imagine withstanding this sort of thing for weeks or even months. I can and you imagine. can't just take the VR headset yeah. off when you're afraid. Wow, These that was dark to me. People insane. Mm. The shockwave may have literally shattered your nerves. Remember something. I don't care how bad it seems. On the Western Front of the First World War, things can always get worse. They Is that can always get much much worse. That aims at you, doesn't it? You can't take the VR headset off. That that aims directly at you. Oh no. No. Oh I'm not ready now. No, I'm not. Oh. 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 This thing is dark! Oh! I don't mean like story, I mean it is physically dark, it's hard to see. Oh. Dude. Why is that noise? Oh, it's gone, it's gone properly back. Hello? Oh. God. Oh. Some sort of gas attack? Oh! Blip! You still can't Ooh, visit I'm some of these battlefields to this day. Even 100 years later, they're still polluted with things like arsenic and mercury and lead. And oh yeah, millions upon millions of unexploded shells. 
Oh. Every so often, a member of the cleanup crews will be killed when one of these old munitions detonates. If a shell fired during the First World War kills somebody cleaning it up today, is that another First World War casualty? Oh. In some very literal ways, this war remains present in our lives, and not just physically. The collective psychological oh. scarring that comes from surviving something like this can affect entire societies far into the future. Oh. The people who made it home from this war, including soon-to-be world leaders like Churchill and Hitler, experienced things that you just had the tiniest taste of, but they did it for real. Okay. And then somehow I had to move on and make the modern world. Maybe it helps us to better understand our times if we recall that they were built and nearly destroyed again, in large part by a generation of traumatized survivors, forever reliving an early 20th century nightmare. Lepanak. Oh. This is an experience. How do you describe the indescribable? Sometimes it takes an artist. British Western Front soldier and painter, Paul Nash had a key eye for the landscape and tried to describe to his wife in a November 1917 letter what a trip up to the front lines was like and what it had done to him. He wrote, I shall not forget it as long as I live. I have seen the most frightful nightmare of a country more conceived by Dante or Poe than by nature. Unspeakable, utterly indescribable. I may give you some idea of its horror, but only being in it and of it can make you sensible of its dreadful nature. We all have a vague notion of the terrors of a battle, but no pen or drawing can convey this country. Evil and the incarnate fiend alone can be master of this war. No glimmer of God's hand is seen anywhere. Sunset and sunrise are blasphemous. They are mockeries to man. The rain drives on, and the shells never cease. They alone plunge overhead, tearing away the rotting tree stumps, breaking the plank roads, oh, striking down well. horses and mules, annihilating, maiming, maddening. They plunge into the grave that is this land. It is unspeakable, godless, hopeless. Yeah. I am no longer an artist interested and curious. I am a messenger who will bring back word from the men who are fighting to those who want this war to go on forever. Feeble, inarticulate will be my message, but it will have a bitter truth and yet burn their lousy souls. So Dan Carlin's the narrator guy then. That's what it says presents. Man, that was an experience. Blip. Wasn't expecting that. Um, okay. Ugh. Okay. Um, yeah, they drop you into that. Damn. Uh, it's short, but... Whew. Okay, um, so uh, thank you for watching this episode. Make sure to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more. This was War Remains. Dan Carlin, why did it do that? I just shook my hand. Don't do that again. Dan Carlin, stop it. War presents an immersive memory. And uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye.